Let's get started. Hi everyone, thank you for joining. Hope you had a good summit so far. Uh, my name is Sean. I come all from, me, from Boston in the US. And this is my second time to Korea and I'm very happy to be here. I think you have a beautiful place here. Uh, a lot of tradition as well as new technology. And today we're going to talk about new technology. So um, you heard already in the morning the theme of this summit, if you will, is next generation infrastructure, right? Uh, so the topic of today is perfect because we're here to talk about the next generation infrastructure. Um, so my role at Red Hat, I lead the OpenStack product, but I also uh, lead OpenShift uh, uh, other areas. And today we're basically blending. So to those of you who've been monitoring OpenStack for a long time, OpenStack, I've been with OpenStack for more than 10 years. Uh, Pretty much the same time Kubernetes has been going on <laughs> for 10 years, right? And finally, 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 these two roads have basically merged, right? So, and we're gonna talk about this merger today. Um, so I wanna start with Gartner. Gartner basically anticipate that in five years from now, right, 95% of all workloads will be containerized. 95%, so fast forward, we're already at the pace where, yes, we all know that the OpenStack runs virtualization, but at the same time, this becomes 95% of production is gonna be containers, right? So it's happening if we are joining the party or not joining the party, this is already the reality, right? So infrastructure today needs to basically manage both. It's not enough to be able to run just virtual machines, and it's not enough to run containers. You know why? Here's why. <laughs> According to uh, um, IBC, uh, the, it, the reality today is complete mix. And this mix of both virtual machines as well as containers is here to stay. And in fact, to quote them and say, many application deployments in VM will ex exceedingly difficult to containerize. So some, some virtual machines cannot even be containerized. We call it lift and ship. So we take a VM, we put it in a container, but it's not not basically cloud native. So we still need to manage both, right? Because it takes a long time to modernize the, the workloads. So for the next, at least foreseeable future, it's gonna be both. So to summarize, our platform, our infrastructure, need to support both containers and virtual machines just the same, because that's a new reality, right? Okay? All right, so here we are today, uh, 2024 summer, and uh, most of the workloads, regardless if it's containers or virtual machines, are basically applications, still applications. Almost 100% of them are still applications. But we at Red Hat envision that tomorrow, basically the near future, we're gonna switch, and that's very radical. So in the future, 50% will be AI models, and only 50% will be applications. So whatever platform you're designing today, you have to plan for this. Why? Because AI workloads, think about it, it's a very hungry pet, right? So those of you who have a dog or a cat, AI is like keeps feeding me all the time. <laughs> it needs more resources, more compute, more memory, more storage, and obviously more power, right? And that's basically have a great impact on infrastructure. So workloads is what run on top of the platform, right? And what we're seeing basically that the future, which is very close, is gonna taking by AI. I'll repeat what I say. The future is taking over by AI. And all of you needs to be prepared now, right? All right, so let's fast forward and talk about what are the requirements. So we have all operating clouds here, right? Some of it I know in this room operate very large clouds, right? And as we look at into the future, what do we need today, look today, what should, concerns we need to have when we pick any, any solution that we're gonna be able to modernize the infrastructure. We're gonna have some vendor, we're gonna have open source, and so forth. This is general requirements that impact everyone, basically, right? So first of all, um, just a month ago, this was all over the news in the US at least, where uh, we saw both Google and Microsoft who spend about $250 billion every quarter to power their AI ambitions, right? With that comes a very high cost. In fact, Google alone 
already exceeded by 45% their prediction they did five years ago, sorry, in 2019, for emission, uh, for power emission, uh, gas emission and impact. Uh, another research actually indicates that in 2025, which is almost here, next year, right? Uh, the projected worldwide, I'll highlight it here, energy consumption only by the hyperscale, by Google, Microsoft, and so forth, Amazon will reach 250 billion kilowatts. And you see the spike here, right? And you know what's the trigger of the spike? AI. <laughs> Again, AI is here to eat everything. And if we're not going to maintain this beast, it's going to go out of the ocean, it's going to suck all the energy out, and obviously you're going to, you're going to go back bankrupt if you're not going to plan correctly, right? Because the, the, it's going to be very, very expensive. So that's a big thing. So we at Red Hat envision that in order to be prepared for this, uh, you need to basically modernize the infrastructure to allow you to address these needs. And uh, we call it the singular modernized network fabric that allows you to connect automated distributed mass scale infrastructure on demand. Uh, so the next generation modern platform requires a better power management, as we just said, right? It's a, it's a, it's a fact. We need hardware acceleration. We need seamless integration and utilization to special hardware to actually deal with a task task. So we have more requirements coming in from this new 50% the, uh, 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 new beast that's going to run on the infrastructure, right? All right. And I'm happy to say that we're here today. And just a week ago, we announced the general availability of our new platform, which is the 18th version of Reddit OpenStack that has actually got a facelift. Uh, the new name is Reddit OpenStack Services on OpenShift. Um, so we talked about OpenStack as a swing lane, we talked about Kubernetes as a swing lane. Uh, Open, OpenShift is the Red Hat application platform, right? Uh, which is enterprise grade Kubernetes. And what we've done with this release, we brought the two together, <laughs> right? Uh, so uh, if you attended the uh, hands-on lab we just did uh, an hour ago in uh, here, uh, you saw a slide that basically OpenStack becomes a workload on Kubernetes, right? That's pretty much a good summary of this. So if you need to leave now and you want one takeaway, OpenStack becomes a workload on Kubernetes. I'll repeat, OpenStack becomes a workload on Kubernetes. And you say, hey, this guy came all the way from Boston. What the hell is he talking about, right? Because we know Cinder, we know Novo, we know Neutron, all the services, they're not cloud native. Well, I got news for you. They are. <laughs> so starting last week, Every service that you know in OpenStack basically got a facelift and is deployed as a cloud-native workload on top of Kubernetes. I'll repeat, every service you know in OpenStack now went cloud-native. So it takes about four minutes. I'll repeat, four minutes. You can count it. We count it. It's actually free, but I'll say four just to be like uh, on the safe side, right? So, so as you can see, we have sorry, we have a meta operator. I'll go back one. Okay, so this meta operator, oh, an operator is is the way you package uh, uh, any cloud native workloads running on top of Kubernetes in OpenShift platform. It's based on Core S, that I'll talk about more. And what it allows you, it allows you to basically natively deploy each one of these services as a microservice, right? It's also packaging pieces of the operating system as well as lifecycle. So from a lifecycle perspective, I can go and just update Nova and upgrade Nova, just Nova, in its operator to a new version of Nova, while the rest of OpenStack is an old version. You heard me right. <laughs> Every one of them is a microservice, so you can actually treat it separately and upgrade them separately as well. And if you deploy it all together with this meta operator that deploys each one of them, it takes about four minutes to deploy one on, on top of OpenShift. So once your Kubernetes up and running, and running, you hit one click, in four minutes you have OpenStack Cloud running. Cool? All right, how long did it take you last time to deploy OpenStack? All right, hours, right? So this is really night and day between when you know. So the new platform, uh, basically, on the right side is this side, right? It's all... Uh, running on, on pods, right? We have the notion of pods in Kubernetes. Uh, so the open the control plane, the entire control plane of OpenStack basically runs on pods, and that's the uh, both uh, OpenShift platform that runs the core S underneath that supports the operator framework. Right? And the left side is basically what we already know, which is the compute nodes running RHEL and all that stuff. 
One thing unique about the bottom is OpenShift and OpenStack permittable resources. Now, what's unique about it, it's actually shared. It's a shared repository. So imagine you have a workload that's a work, virtual machines, and you work all night to modernize the workload to become native and cloud native, and now you want to run it on OpenShift, okay? As a cloud native workload. Hmm, can I take the hardware that this virtual machine used to run on? Now I can. I simply, with the same OpenShift management, and go, I can select the hardware that used to run OpenStack virtual machine, hardware, now moving to OpenShift to run a container. Vice versa, I can move nodes between OpenShift and OpenStack, right? Uh, how many of you are running, you know, in, all right, the bare metal service in OpenStack? We have Metal Cube, which is the bare metal service in Kubernetes, and guess what? They're unified. So it's a unified bare metal management that's done with this. Really cool. So let's talk about some of the benefits we have with this new platform. Uh, first of all, faster deployment. How fast? Three minutes, four minutes? 250% faster than three below in previous versions, and right? director, right? 200%. Accelerated uh, development. So now, you, because you have OpenShift and OpenStack, you have Kubernetes and OpenStack in the same platform, I can now spin up new workloads as I modernize them, right? So in the same platform, I I'm I'm, I'm have a one platform, and I can give it basically cloud native services, and I can give virtual machines all from the same place, right? So it's really speed up the development as well. So as I modernize more workload, I can, with the same infrastructure, give it to more tenants and so forth, right? Elastic capacity and scalability. Um, how many of you have heard about auto-scaling in Kubernetes? So Kubernetes has the capability to auto-scale your cluster. So we're taking infrastructure as a service from OpenStack, we're taking auto-scaling capability with OpenShift, and basically, you can scale linear, right? So I'll give you an example. Um, Black Friday or uh, uh, the Bachelor <laughs> Day uh, uh, and so forth, right? There's a peak in retail, right? And if I'm a retailer and I'm running an OpenStack Cloud, I can now spin up more workload, on the, more clusters on demand, right? Uh, uh, and then also turn them down on demand based on the use case. So I don't have to build cloud infrastructure in advance and so forth. I can do it very dynamically, that, that's the point. Uh, I'm skipping unified observability because I have a slide on it. And then unified management also in the same place. Easier do take operations. So once you're an OpenStack 18, or an OpenStack services on OpenShift, everything is faster. Why? If you ran already workloads on Kubernetes, that's the experience you're gonna have by managing. So it's the same management, from OpenShift perspective that allows you to manage now both OpenStack and OpenShift, and it's very fast, so day two operations, as I said, it's operator-based. You can actually upgrade the entire cluster of Kubernetes of OpenShift, non-disruptively to the workloads running in OpenStack, right? You can go as soon as, as faster in terms of upgrades and so forth. Uh, greater cost management, because you centralize the operation, that's a very key point. So it's not just the technologies, I thought, the two roads coming together. I have a lot of customers they have a team that manages OpenStack, they have another team that manages Kubernetes, right? With this, the same team can run both, right? You don't need two teams. I can actually save the operation, for example, because the skill set is really good. By the way, we have great training already for this new platform, so if you're new to Kubernetes, with the, the training we have just for OpenStack 18, you can get up to speed in how to deploy, uh, so it's really good to, it's a, I would say it's a mandatory requirement for OpenStack admins so, to already know Kubernetes in these days, anyway. All right, so, sorry, go back. I mentioned unified observability. So what you're seeing here is actually uh, OpenShift console. So those of you who have not deployed yet OpenShift, that's how the console looks like. And in the console, there's an observe section when you can monitor your workloads, container native workloads, right, on OpenShift site. But using the same console, now you can actually monitor as well OpenStack compute nodes as well. And the OpenShift, obviously, control plane. So it's a unified experience of managing the two platforms. We're using native operators that manages OpenShift observability to manage OpenStack observability. So the cluster logging operator, we use it for OpenShift workloads, we use it for OpenStack workloads. It's the same, it's a, the same operator as we use in OpenShift that now basically covers OpenStack use cases. So me as an operator, uh, how many of you are service providers here? And uh, raise your hand real quick. Okay, how many of you are running 4G LTE today in your data centers? And how many of you are running 5G? 
right? So with this, you can actually monitor, monitor both platforms in the same time. 5G running on uh, OpenShift and uh, Kubernetes, and 4G running in OpenStack, and, but again, it's the same unified experience you're gonna get for both. All right, let's talk about sustainability. I mentioned the power concern, right, because power management becomes a really critical thing now that we manage AI <laughs> models on top of the platforms. So uh, it's critical for large scale deployments. It's critical because if you're running core as well as edge, obviously at the edge you have more power constraints. So you need to actually limit the power use case of your edge deployment. You actually need to balance the performance versus power. So, uh, and that's a decision you, you have to make even per footprint. And lastly, some of the workloads, especially in your, your telco space, are very, I mentioned the pet earlier, which is very needy and hungry all the time. So how many have run DPDK workloads here? They're very demanding, <laughs> right? So in fact, if you run a, a, a DPDK workload VM, it will consume pretty much the, the most of the power, the 100% of the power memory and all that stuff. So there, we need a ways, even at the application level, to limit power and basically enable monitoring so we know the power consumption of the workloads. So imagine you are running an AI model on-prem, on top of OpenShift and OpenStack in your on-prem data center, right? You need to know <laughs> the power consumption of that model, right? That's how. So we're adding more capabilities and the, the technology band is called Kepler. Kepler now is a tech preview as well in uh, OpenShift. And uh, this capability that you're seeing here with DPDK is actually coming in the first feature pack of OpenStack 18, which is in November. So you can actually leverage Kepler to monitor the workloads as well, so you can see where, how you're using basically the uh, power consumption. All right, so earlier I talked about our vision for a singular network in a unified management, right? Uh, one of the key things that OpenShift brings to the table is more granularity in management. So in OpenShift, there's a, a, a model of deployment that's called hosted control plane. What does mean hosted control plane? So we know what's a control plane, we saw it earlier. Hosted means that the control plane management is running actually centralized on top. So think about all the cluster that needs to manage, <laughs> right? Uh, the control plane for, for OpenShift, they're running in a centralized ma ma infrastructure. You know what else runs here? OpenStack services runs on the same Kubernetes OpenShift cluster. So we have both cluster from management cluster that allows us to run both worker nodes which are OpenStack and worker nodes compute nodes that are OpenShift, all from the same head. Now, what's cool about it, at the top of this cluster, you can run various services. ODF is basically Ceph running natively, right, on top of OpenShift. Quay is a registry. Uh, ACM, OpenShift ACM is an advanced cluster management, so you can actually manage a fleet of cluster of OpenShift. Uh, OpenShift observability that I just mentioned, it's a workload running on top of OpenShift, but why should I run it on, on a bare metal that's running my, my application workload? It doesn't make any sense. It's, it's an infrastructure service. So all of the workloads on top are basically infrastructure service. So we have one centralized cluster, and from the same cluster, I can now spin up worker nodes in OpenShift and Kubernetes and spin up worker nodes in OpenStack. So I'll, I'll do it. I know what your mind is right now. What is this guy is talking about? So I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase it for you. We're not just modernizing OpenStack for the sake of OpenStack being modernized. With this capability, we are able to manage containers and OpenStack workloads, which are virtualized, all from the same place with the same operational experience. Right? Which is cloud native experience. It's not virtualization experience. Right? So we basically two, did two things. A, we modernized OpenStack itself, but the management factor is higher. It's not just OpenStack. Open, OpenStack as it becomes a workload on, open, on, on Kubernetes, and Kubernetes can manage more than just OpenStack. Right? That's the point. All right, so let's talk about the benefits of this platform. Uh, first of all, centralized operations. Now, uh, because it's all one cluster, and you still can run a lot of capabilities on. Unified uh, management, as we talked about also with the bare metal, you can move between the nodes and uh, minimize uh, operational overhead by streaming teams. So it's one team can manage both, and we don't need like five different teams to five, five different technologies. It's, it's like the same team can do both. Sustainable architects that pr provide a, 
promotes energy efficiency, as we see it, with power monitoring and capillary integration, uh, reduce time to detect and recover. So one of the cool things we're doing in the observability space in OpenShift and Kubernetes is use AI to actually detect faster problems. Uh, in the end of the slide, I'm going to show you already LLM with OpenStack and OpenShift. But before we even go and ask the LLM what's going on in my cluster, I need to know what something goes wrong in my cluster, and I need actually to happen in here. So I mentioned earlier that OpenStack can run in service providing your public cloud. It can run in your private cloud. It can run in the edge. But you all need to know if something goes down, where are you getting all this information? So it needs all to populate to something somewhere centralized, and this is what we are bringing to the table. With AI, we're actually now doing correlation. So if something happened, we can correlate the problem and let you know already in the dashboard where the root cause of the problem is. And it can be hardware problem, it can be application problem. So you don't have to find different log stores or different, even with different types and formats, it's all one place and goes, uh, and, and make it easier for you to detect and reduce the time to recover. All right, I've talked about a lot of AI, let's talk about AI. Right? So uh, another notion I want you to adapt, right? We keep talking about infrastructure, neck jagging, and so forth. AI optimized infrastructure, right? It's a new term, but you have all to adapt to it because your platform needs to adapt to AI, right? So whatever investment you're doing right now in your uh, data centers, you have to adapt for the next platform. We at Reddit have three pillars of investments when it comes to AI. The first one is what we hear about to talk today, which is the AI optimized infrastructure, as we discussed. And we're doing it both for uh, all of our platforms, right? The second one is uh, Red Hat OpenShift AI that to accelerate the value of AI applications and consume models, both the homegrown or third party models that you can run in your hybrid cloud. The third one is AI enabled products, how we can use AI within our products, right? I just gave you the example of uh, using AI for observability as an example. All right, so here's our basically portfolio, which is AI ready. And uh, we are here at the bottom with this cloud infrastructures, and at the bottom, obviously, we have the hardware acceleration that we need to expose. But at Red Hat, we allow you to run basically any AI models. Uh, we have a, a, a Red Hat OpenShift, and we have a RHEL AI now that you can actually train models on your laptop as well, even before you roll them into your data center. OpenShift AI allows you to run basically any model and manage it on top of the platform. But again, for you to have a global experience, which is develop, tune, deploy applications, as well as AI operation and scale, use the flexibility, all of it, this is basically it's an entire stack. So we cannot just talk about the infrastructure, we need to talk about also the how you manage this AI workload. Um, and if you look at the hardware acceleration, which is just the bottom, right? So we at Red Hat have been working really close with key hardware providers, such as NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, and Marvell, uh, to expose both GPUs, DPUs, IPUs, basically all the PUs that you can think of, which is the new uh, area. So for us, to those of you who've been in the last sessions, uh, uh, one of the things that we talked about is like how we manage uh, AI resources, right? And, and use the hardware acceleration so we can benefit. Uh, so obviously, this is all the things basically working with NVIDIA we're already exposed today. Whatever I'm showing you in the slides, you can actually work tomorrow morning, deploy OpenSAC 18 and do all of what I said. It's not the future, the future is here already. All right, so run isolated AML workload with a fully guaranteed service SLA. You can, so you can protect it with different data scientists. Uh, enable AI stack with NVIDIA 5.0, already enabled in OpenStack. Share GPUs and parallel workloads, right? The previous session we gave earlier today by Red Hat was all about live migrations, GPUs and GPU management, and GPU quotas, and basically all the resource optimization you can do, which is the second line here, smart resource allocation. As we expose these new capabilities, OpenStack plays a role. It's not just, hey, I'm using, and I bought a GPU, which is $30,000, $40,000, right? But I need to actually maximize the GPU. I can virtualize the GPU as and give it to four data scientists. And now I can also provide resource management. I can provide quota. I can like migrate it, right? This is the responsibility of OpenStack layer on top of the other accelerations for AI workloads, right? So all of it is coming together, as you see, as Lego pieces. But we can actually provide all of it today. And obviously, OpenStack 18 can provide you already all the native integrations with popular frameworks, such as NVIDIA AI 5, 
TensorFlow, PyTorch, basically all your AI stack running on top, right? So really, really cool stuff coming your way. Last thing I promised, LLM. So we have a new uh, um, announcement around OpenShift, which is now going to be available as well for OpenStack, because OpenStack, as you heard, is a workload on OpenShift. And uh, we call it Lightspeed. So we have two Lightspeed at Reddit. One is for Ansible. The second one is coming up as a dev view right, right now for OpenShift. What it allows you is to open a chatbot and ask the chatbot, hey, what's going on in my cluster? Or scale my cluster? Or what is OpenShift? Like if I'm new to OpenShift, right? It will basically tell you what you need to know, right? So it's a generative AI based on a conversational assistant, very human language. Uh, so if you need to open stack or you need to open ship, it's very friendly. So it can give you all the information you need. It leverage a, a rag and it basically uh, uh, um, it uses a, also support bring your LLM provider. So by definition, it integrates with OpenAI and what's the next and so forth. Really cool stuff. So key takeaways: the future is already here, right? AI is going to eat the world, and you need to be prepared today, <laughs> right? Because the power consumption is going to go out the roof. Your expenses are going to go off the roof, and guess what? Virtualization and containers are already here. So future, 50% of the workloads are going to actually be AI workloads, so let's prepare for it before it's taking our job, right? And replaces our jobs with AI bot. All right, I was Sean. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming to Open Summit. <laughs>